Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm pleased to welcome you to the panel of the Delphi Economic Forum, dedicated to a very important topic, especially in the time of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, which is the Health Diplomacy Program of LP, the Association of Friends uh, of Children with uh, Cancer. For more than uh, 30 years, Elpida Association is fighting against uh, childhood cancer that builds bridges and solidarity among people. It has saved thousands of children suffering from cancer in Greece and other countries in the world and has offered relief and uh, significant support to them and their families during and after therapy. It created the first born marrow transplant unit in Greece in 1992 the Elpida Guest House in 1999, the first Oncology Children's Hospital in 2010, the Bon Nar Marrow Donor Registry, Ora Elpidas in 2014, and the first Cell and Gene Therapy Center for Children and Teenagers in 2020. The Health Diplomacy Program is the new initiative of Elpida Association aiming at strengthening international cooperation on important issues related to health. I would like to welcome the founder and president of LP, the Association, Goodwill Ambassador of UNESCO, Mrs. Mariana Bardinoyanis, who will introduce us the Health Diplomacy Program. As a diplomatic correspondent, uh, I'm very uh, grateful to be here among uh, all of you. And before I give uh, uh, Mariana Bardinoyanis uh, the floor, I would like to point out that uh, Ms. Vardinoyanis is a world advocate and campaigner of human rights, peace building and global solidarity, education, cultural heritage, and children's health. Her work has been recognized internationally with numerous instructions and honorary doctorates around the world. She received the Nelson Mandela Prize in 2020 of the United Nations and she is the only Greek woman who has received a grand the Grand Cross of the Order of Beneficency of the Hellenic Republic. She is the founder and honorary president of the Alexandria Center of uh, Hellenistic uh, Studies, member of uh, Bibliotheca Alexandrina Advisory Board, and uh, of the Leadership Councils of Robert Kennedy Human Rights uh, Concordia, and the Hellenic Initiative Trustee of Mentor Foundation. Uh, Ms. Mariana Vardino Yanis, thank you very much uh, for your presence. Uh, we're ready to listen to you. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor and pleasure for me to welcome you to the special panel of the Delphi Economic Forum featuring the Health Diplomacy by Elpida Program. This program is a new initiative of the Association of Friends of Children with Cancer in association with the Mariana Vardinoyanis Foundation, aiming at strengthening global cooperation towards important health challenges of our time, especially those of childhood cancer, COVID-19 and more. Our main target is to connect people and ideas for the promotion of health diplomacy between states, international organizations, research and university institutions, decision-making centers, hospitals, public and private bodies, scientists and individuals, for advocacy on equal access of sick children to advanced therapies, for encouragement of uh, synergies, and for raising public awareness on important health issues. The United Nations Organization has declared 2021 as the International Year of Peace and Confidence in order to activate the international community's efforts to promote trust between nations, political dialogue, mutual understanding and cooperation in order to build sustainable peace, solidarity and harmony. The COVID-19 pandemic became the starting point of a new era, and this is indeed an urgent moment for humanity to make these positive steps. One of the major efforts that we support in this context is UNESCO's Initiative for Open Science, an initiative that demonstrates a human rights approach to science, which aims to enable 
wider access to scientific information and results to encourage science to the more connected to social needs and promote equal opportunities for all. Open science can bridge the gaps in science, technology, and innovation between and within countries. Our fight against childhood cancer for more than 30 years has showed us that such important causes can be platforms of peace and solidarity for a world without borders, without discrimination and exclusion, but with equal opportunities in health, education, and life for every child on, on the planet. This is a vision that led Elpida to establish the Affiliations Program in 2013, to build bridges of friendship and cooperation among prominent hospitals around the world. To save thousands of children from cancer, not only from Greece, but also from countries uh, of the Mediterranean, the Balkans, and beyond. And now, through the Health Diplomacy by Elpida program, we intend to share our vision, especially at this moment that humanity is building the day after. It is a special privilege for me to welcome our prominent speakers. Mrs. Irina Bokova, former Director General of UNESCO, Mrs. Mrs. Amila Ner Beduel, Assistant Director General for Natural Science of UNESCO, and Professor David Kayad, founder and former president of the National Cancer Institute of France. I would like to thank them warmly for their participation, which is a great honor for us, and to express to them my highest appreciation on their long-lasting commitment and outstanding achievements, which are a real inspiration for all of us. I would like also to thank our moderator, as well as uh, the organizers, for hosting our panel and to congratulate them on this successful organization. Thank you very much. And thank you, Mariana Vardino Yanis, for your inspiring speech and the vision that you shared uh, with us. Our next speaker is one of the most influential women, uh, according to Forbes. She is from Bulgaria and she has received state distinctions from more than 40 countries across the world and honorary doctorates of leading universities. Uh, Mrs. Irina Bokova, Director General of UNESCO for two terms from uh, 2009 to 2017, is honoring us with her participation today, and we thank her warmly. Uh, as Director General of UNESCO, Mrs. Bakova has uh, actively engaged in the United Nations efforts to adopt Agenda 2030 for uh, sustainable development, especially on education for all, gender equality, and cultural heritage. As a result, uh, the United Nations Security Council adopted the 2017 the landmark resolution 2347 uh, declaring uh, for the first time uh, the link between peace and security with the protection of uh, cultural uh, heritage. Currently, she's a member uh, of the board of Ban Ki-moon Center for Global Citizens, member of the Concordia Leadership uh, Council, global champion of uh, United Nations Educational uh, Cannot Wait Fund, lecturer uh, for cultural diplomacy, and uh, a lot uh, more. Uh, Ms. Irina Bokova has uh, also elected as international honorary member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in the category of scientific, cultural, and nonprofit leadership for 2020. Mrs. Bokova, uh, it's a great honor to welcome you to the Delphi uh, Economic Forum. Uh, the floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, dear Professor David Hayat, let me first of all thank my dear friend, Mariana Vardinoyanis, UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador, for the invitation to address this important discussion on how to strengthen international cooperation on issues of health in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. This gives me, once again, the opportunity to say a word of appreciation and deep respect to Mrs. Mariana Varidino Yanis, whose dedication to humanitarian causes is so inspiring. The Elpida Children's Oncology Hospital, 
which is among the first such hospitals to be built in Europe and that I have visited, is her most significant accomplishment. Open to the public in October 2010, it provides state-of-the-art facilities for treatment of malignant diseases of children and offers hospitality to their families in a very colorful complex of buildings. I was so impressed when I visited the hospital there. And one of the most strong marks of this hospital is that it embraced the latest scientific discoveries in cancer and in health. Giving the example of this important initiative, I would like to emphasize two aspects in our debate. The first is related to science and health, very much into the focus of today's response to the global pandemic. In January 2020, 117 organizations, including journals, founding bodies, centers for disease prevention, signed a statement titled, Sharing Research Data and Findings Relevant to the Novel Coronavirus Outbreak, committing to provide immediate open access for peer-reviewed publications, at least for the duration of the outbreak, to make research findings available via preprint servers, and to share results immediately with the World Health Organization. This was followed in March by the Public Health Emergency COVID-19 Initiative at the level of chief science advisors of 12 countries calling for open access to publications and machine readable access to data related to COVID-19, which resulted in an even stronger commitment by publishers. The Open COVID Pledge launched in April 2020 by an international coalition of scientists, lawyers, and technology companies called on authors to make all intellectual property under their control available, free of charge, and without encumbrances to help end the COVID-19 pandemic and reduce the impact of the disease. Following these commitments, a number of leading publishers and journals are providing open access and numerous data servers are available to share epidemiological, clinical, and genomics data. Data, protocols, and standards used to collect this data are also being shared. The COVID-19 Open Research Dataset contains already 57,000 entries, including 41,000 full text machine readable articles on COVID-19 and related coronaviruses and serves as a basis for data mining by machine learning technologies in order to answer a set of open questions about the virus. All this illustrates the power of open science, online platforms that are increasingly facilitating collaborative work of COVID-19 researchers around the world. We see nowadays that the world is calling out for science, for shared science, for science that will make our societies more resilient, inclusive and prosperous, because we know that science flourishes through dialogue, through the interaction of peoples and cultures and through the meeting of minds. I'm delighted that UNESCO has taken once again the lead in promoting open access to scientific knowledge, to scientific publications, research data, and platforms. And I would like to congratulate once again, most more warmly, my dear friend Mariana, for her continued commitment to UNESCO's efforts to make the world a better place through its pledge for open science. Thank you for your attention 
and I wish you a very fruitful deliberations. And thank you, Mrs. Bakova, for the significant uh, views that uh, you shared uh, with us. Uh, our next speaker is also a prominent member of your UNESCO family, uh, Dr. Uh, Samira Nair Beduel, Assistant Director General of UNESCO for Natural Sciences, uh, is honoring us uh, today with uh, participation, and uh, we thank her warmly. Uh, Dr. Nair uh, Beduel is from South Africa, and she has a long-standing career as a researcher at the University of Cape Town Institute Pasteur, MIT University Park in Boston, and the French uh, National Institute for Medical Research. She has also implemented outstanding international program of the United Nations, UNESCO, and the European Commission. She was director of the Ozone Action at the United Nations Environmental Program, and she was uh, responsible for implementing programs for the Montreal Protocol in uh, 148 uh, developing countries. She also launched uh, the first global program for capacity building for women uh, technicians. In 2017, uh, Dr. Nair Beduel, she was nominated the first class director of research of, at INSERM. Today, she will speak us about uh, UNESCO's effort to cover the gaps of science among countries, and especially the appear of uh, uh, open science. Uh, Dr. Nair Beduel, we welcome you, and we're ready uh, to listen to you. Dear colleagues, it gives me great pleasure to address you here today on behalf of UNESCO, the United Nations Educational Scientific and cultural organization based in Paris. Before I begin, I would like to begin my remarks by expressing my deep appreciation and sincere thanks to the chairman of the Delphi Economic Forum, Mr. Simeon Somokos, and I wish you a very successful forum. I also wish to extend my profound gratitude to Mrs. Mariana Vardino Yanis, the UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador for inviting UNESCO to join in this important event and enabling us to participate in this global platform and exchanges on health diplomacy at a very crucial time in humanity. Since wars begin in the minds of men and women, it is in the minds of men and women that, de that the defenses of peace must be constructed and UNESCO seeks to build peace through international cooperation in education, science and culture doing so since 1945. Dear colleagues, the pandemic has demonstrated a unique and productive coalition of scientists working together, exchanging scientific and epidemiological data, and building collaborations beyond paywalls, patents, and borders to the service of humanity to improve global health and protect the world via science diplomacy. This is really a true demonstration of how the exchange of scientific knowledge can also contribute to health diplomacy. Governments are referring to science to guide them in the measures taken in order to protect the nation's health and the spread of the virus and manage the pandemic. Of course, disasters of this magnitude means that no country is immune to this particular pandemic. In a world more and more connected, we need one another. We need more science. We need better science, but we need to ensure that the developments of scientific and technological advances benefits everyone and that no one is left behind. Now, within this globalized world, open science will be a game changer to bring together the scientific research communities, to strengthen the relationships between science and society, and to strengthen relationships and diplomacy between nations. We also have seen that linkages between knowledge systems, which is the hardcore science, citizen science and diplomacy, are critical for ensuring that no one is left behind. This unique mobilization of the world's scientific community is a true testimony of the value of open science without borders, and that it is possible to access health services for each and every person across the world through access to science, technology, and innovation. To ensure that science truly benefits people and the planet and leaves no one behind, there's a need to transform the entire scientific process. Therefore, UNESCO is proceeding 
with the development of a UNESCO recommendation on open science. UNESCO was tasked by the 193 member states to move ahead and to develop an open science recommendation, which can be a true game changer to fulfill the human right to science, to build the science, technology and innovation gaps between and within nations. This recommendation aims to build a global consensus through an inclusive, transparent and a, con and a consultative process, bringing together stakeholders and countries. It is all about developing a recommendation based on overarching principles and shared values. Dear colleagues, the rapid spread of health technologies during the pandemic has opened up a very dynamic space for the development of scientific capacities worldwide, but also health diplomacy. And the COVID has brought together the nexus of the science health diplomacy across the world. During this crisis, we acknowledge this convening power of science to unite nations, and there's an urgency for open science to solve not only this pandemic, but other complex global problems facing the world today. The UNESCO science Open Science Recommendation aims at contributing to reducing the digital, technological and knowledge divides that exist between and within countries. Dear colleagues, a scientific humanism in a troubled world must be at the heart of all of our endeavours for peaceful and healthy world. In order to promote science diplomacy, we also need to understand one another, to live better with each other and to be able to accept one another. Transferring scientific, technological and innovation knowledge will ensure we have knowledge societies to meet the challenges of the current world. I wish you successful forum and deliberations and thank you for inviting UNESCO. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Daira Berduel. Thank you very much for uh, your significant uh, information and your views that you shared with us. And we really hope that uh, UNESCO's effort will be successful. Our last speaker is one of the most prominent uh, professors of medicine and uh, also founder of the Charter of Paris Against Cancer at uh, UNESCO. Professor David Cayal uh, is uh, honoring us uh, with uh, his presence today. He's a medical oncologist in Paris. Uh, Professor of Medicine in the Department of Breast Diseases in Anderson Cancer Center, University of Texas in the United States, and Professor Emeritus of several institutions, including the Machimoto University in Japan and the Heraklion University in uh, Greece. Uh, Mr. David Kaya, he was also the president of the French National Cancer Institute from 2004 to 2006. In 1988, uh, he organized the French Federation of Medical Oncologists and was elected uh, its first president, a post he held until in 2001. He was also one of the organizers of the World Summit Against Cancer in 2000, in 2001 uh, at UNESCO. He has received a title of Commander of British Empire, an officer of the Legion of Honor of the French uh, Republic, uh, along with uh, many other international uh, distinctions. Uh, Professor Kaya is one of the first time uh, that you are participating in an event related to Elpida Association. You have been an important ally uh, to us, to Greece, to its work of Elpida Association for years. Uh, welcome you. I want to welcome you to the Delphi Economic Forum. Uh, we are ready to listen to you. We're really honored uh, to be uh, listening to you and to have you. Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, let me thank you, the organizing committee and uh, Mrs. Mariana Vardinoyanis for the kind invitation. I'm really honored to share this discussion with you. Uh, as you said, the Pilda Foundation, which I supported since the first days, it's a major monument dedicated to the care of malignant hematologic diseases in childhood. It is a lighthouse in the Mediterranean world taking care of children with leukemia, whatever their nationality, their religion, or their poverty. We will never be able to thank Mariana vardino Yenis for at the level she deserves. Let me come now to the object of my lecture. Uh, the recent issues that were raised about the availability of anti-COVID vaccine 
illustrates more than any lecture how how health diplomacy has become a tremendous and an electric field of relationship between both human beings and more importantly between nations china on one side and russia on another one have used their capacity to export their vaccines to risk to reinforce their influence in different parts of the world nevertheless the chinese vaccine had only a 50 percent efficacy brazil morocco and many other countries have launched their national vaccine campaign in order for their governments to demonstrate that they were caring for their population. The reason for all that to happen is because health has become a major political issue and no more just a medical issue. People are actively asking for a better health, the relief of their symptoms and sufferance, and ultimately to be saved in case of a lethal disease. And most of the governments have heard and understood that claim coming from the world nations. And this is only they, they have accepted to spend that huge amount of money, even though this will increase to an unbearable level their uh, national debts. On another hand, we cannot ignore the way the richest nations have, have com uh, completely forgotten the poorest ones. If the epidemic starts to be controlled in Europe and in the United States, that same epidemic is growing in less developed countries such as India or Brazil. Can we ignore it? No, not at all. Why? At least if this is not because of our empathy to dispose these poor human beings, at least let's do something because we know that the uncontrolled growing of the epidemic in their country will induce the emergence um, of new mutants, usually more resistant, that finally will come back to us as a boomerang. This is why we do have to help them, provide them with enough vaccine and work with them to stop the spread of that COVID. But what is what we have, but what is what we have learned from a world infectious epidemia? Do we think that after that epidemia will be under control, that our nations will forget what they have asked with such a strength? I don't think so. Indeed, I really don't think so. I am, in my personal fields, oncology, malignant diseases, I'm sure that people in the future will not accept to risk their lives because they have to wait for a surgical procedure or for a CT scan or will not accept the shortage and the unavailability of certain drugs that could have improved their medical condition. Their experience through the way uh, our healthcare system will take care of them might, be, might significantly influence the way they and their relatives will vote for the next election. This is what I did when in the year 2000, I convinced the President Jacques Chirac President of France at that time, to set up a national cancer uh, control plan. And this is what he meant when he accepted this challenge and signed on the 4th of February 2000, the UNESCO Charter of Paris Against Cancer, which means recognize the link between a medical and a political agenda. Health and healthcare is becoming one of the most important political issues and our duties are to raise awareness among our political people about that new reality. And this is why I think such meetings are so important for the future of our humanity. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much for your extremely interesting speech, uh, Professor Kayan. And uh, I want to ask you a question. How important is uh, nowadays uh, in this for the health diplomacy initiatives uh, of uh, kind of uh, the Elpida Foundation of uh, Mariana Vardino Yanes. Uh, this is one of the greatest and the most important thing one can do these days, um, because what it does, and this is the summary of my lecture, is that it can convince people and, and, and understand that, that med medicine as care, health condition, is no more just a, 
medical and scientific issue. It is a political issue, a really a political issue. People will vote in the future because of the, our, because their healthcare system will have been able to take care of their health. And, uh, and this is new for years and years. You know, medicine was in the hospital and was the something that doctors should were, were supposed to do. Now we understand that health is also a political issue that is in, within the hands of our politicians. So we have to convince that this is one of the most important things for the future of humankind. Thank you so much for your participation and uh, your views. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching the panel for the Health Diplomacy Program of Elpida Association. Uh, let's hope that uh, initiatives like this will contribute to the strengthening of international cooperation, adding Elpida's uh, message for global solidarity and hope in the building of the day after. Thank you very much.